Hi, I'm Bob Alsop with Shop Saber CNC. Around here they call me Router Bob. I've got a great video for you today. It's all about how to set up your new Shop Saber CNC router. You know, we got an interesting question on the Saber Nation forum the other day. A customer posted a picture and said, why do I have a, a gap in this joint? Well, that's very interesting. So what I wanted to do with this video is really focus on how to correctly set the machine up because when you have a problem like that with a gap in a joint, it's, it's caused by one or two things. It's either a machine setup issue or it's a software setup issue. And the easiest thing to eliminate is the machine part. So we're going to go through step by step how you correctly set your shop saber CNC up. When you turn your machine on, the first thing that you have to do is home the machine and there's a button on the screen that says home. But let me explain to you what home is. Home becomes a reference. So really here's what's happening on the machine. In each of the axes, the machine starts moving and it, it actually moves in that direction until it trips a sensor. Okay, and it does that in all three axes. Once it's done that, then the machine knows where it's at. If I do that tomorrow or the next day or the next day, it's always the same position. So home becomes our reference for everything. So everything we do internally in the machine control has to do where that home position is. Our next concept is called origin. Some people might call it a work offset, a work coordinate. Uh, it could be called G54. On our machine control, we call it the XY0. What it has to do is where we actually locate something that relates to our drawing. It, it really has to do with where on the table our part that we're going to make it lies. Now, when you're doing panel processing, normally it's going to be the lower left corner of the spoil boards, typically where that's going to be. It doesn't have to be. Sometimes when you're making signs, the origin's in the center of the drawing if it's a really regular shape. In our case, we're going to do our setup as though we were doing cabinet parts or, or panel processing parts. So it's going to be the lower left corner. So here's what we do. We basically put a pointed tool into the spindle and we jog it over and we get it lined up exactly with where we want that corner to be. Like I said before, it's probably going to be the corner where our spoil board is. Once we get to that position, then we press a button on the machine control that says XY0. From that point on, X0Y0 on the machine is at that corner. Now once that's done, it's a great idea to record what that value is in machine coordinates in case you ever have to need to reset that. Once we've set zero in the X and Y axis, then we need to set it in the Z axis also. Now the home position for Z is all the way up. Well that's fine except we're going to machine down on the table. So something has to tell the machine control where that position is. When you go back to your programming software, you've made a determination where you're going to touch a tool off. It's either going to be to the top of the material or it's going to be to the top of the spoil board, which is really the bottom of the material. In our panel processing example here, we almost always touch off to the top of the spoil board because that allows us to switch to different materials without making any change of setup on the machine. Now let's look at the process that's used to actually set that Z0 position. We start this process by putting a tool in the spindle. And normally I select a straight bit, a quarter inch bit, or half inch, or whatever, just a simple straight bit. I press the tool HT button on the machine control and here's what's going to happen. The machine's going to jog over to, over to the switch, to the tool height switch, and it's going to come down and it's going to trip that switch. From that point on, because the internal calculation in the machine control, the control knows how far it is from machine home to that tip. Then it can base the rest of the calculations on that. Now let's take it to the next step. This next process is extremely critical. All right, here's what happens. We're actually going to touch what's called touching the tool off. Now here's what, what we're going to do. We've got a spoil board on the table. We're going to put a piece of plywood on there and we're going to cover it up and maybe leave about an inch on the front exposed. We're going to turn the vacuum pump on and turn the vacuum on. The reason we do that is because that pressure of the sheet coming down actually compresses the MDF and that determines the true zero height. So we want to do that before we touch off, otherwise we'll be off. Okay, so let's assume we've done that. Now we jog the machine over so that the router bit is right over that exposed area and we carefully jog it down to the surface. What I do is I get fairly close to it and then I switch over to an incremental. Now here's what that means. I use the incremental button that says a thousand. That means every time I press the, the down arrow key for the spindle or the page down key, it moves it a thousandth of an inch. Okay, I take a piece of regular paper I use it like a feeler gauge. I keep bringing it down until it just, till I just feel a touch. 
Then I remove that paper and I click that button four more times. And the reason I'm doing that is because that paper is 4,000 thick. So I've compensated for that. Then I go to the machine control and I hit the button that says Z0. That sets the Z plane. Once that's done, I've set the machine up. If you prefer not to have to do the manual touch off to locate the surface, we also sell a tool called a material height tool switch that basically automates that process. Now we've got the X, Y, zero position set and the Z position set. If you have an ATC machine, this would be a good time to go ahead and touch off the rest of your tools with the tool height switch. All right, now when you run your program and you check the joints, if there's a gap in the joints, that's a software problem. So what we've done in this video is we've gone through the steps that, that you do to ensure that the machine's set up correctly and your tools are set up correctly. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, sometimes I don't think we focus enough on the fundamentals of CNC setup, and that's why I wanted to, to do a video to show you step-by-step -step how to do this correctly. If you have any questions, you can contact us at shopsaber.com. Thank you for watching.